Ibn Yadi viewers, welcome to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses on current affairs pertaining to Africa. My name is Case Kiwinda. Now I just greeted you in the language spoken by the Mandinga people. This is a tribe that originated many many years ago from the Kingdom of Ghana and settled predominantly in West Africa and most notably in two countries, those two being Mal Mali sorry, and uh, the Islamic Republic of Gambia. And it is of this latter country that I would like to have a discussion with you today. Now, the Gambia is known for a great deal of things. It's known for Kunta Kinta Island on the Gambia River. It's known for its farming, its fishing, and its tourism. It's also known for the tribe that I mentioned earlier, the Mandinga tribe, who were basically traded off as slaves back in the day. And it seems that their hardships are still not over in this day and age. But more on that later. The main reason why I wanted to discuss this uh, country with you today is because of the elections that were held last month in December. Now, I know the, ele the topic that I discussed in the previous um, episode was also about elections, but today's is not in a positive light. I'm sad to say it's quite the opposite. Now, the Gambia gained independence in 1965 and has had four, pres four heads of state ever since with Yahya Jame obviously being the last till date. Now, he staged a bloodless coup in 1994 and gained a presidency in 1996. So he's been running for over 22 years. And let's just say that those 22 years have definitely been full of wonder and surprise as, with, as to regards with how he will react to certain situations or what he will say next, as this guy is known to be a loose cannon and nobody has ever been able to correctly speculate what will come out of his mouth next. And the elections of, 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 of past December did not disappoint because what happened there was a big shock to everyone. You see, his main, the main opposition uh, leader, uh, Adama Barrow, managed to really rally the opposition together around him and he won with a resounding uh, positive results over Yahya Jame. Now, the following day after these, these results were proclaimed, Yahya Jame actually graciously seemed to have conceded defeat. And everybody's wondering, did he forget to take his meds? Or is he so depressed that uh, people ousted him with this vote that he just decided to dejectedly say, dejectedly say, sure, I'm going ahead with it? Or... Nobody quite knows, but the gist of the story is, or the pure essence of it is, is that he conceded defeat. And in fact, he even gave a call. It's, it's there. There's a recording. He called to the opposition leader, Adama Barrow, and wished him well in the succession of uh, gaining the presidency. Big shocker. Now, no one's quite sure of what happened next. Did he suddenly remembered to take his medicines back in, his medicine back in. Did his wife and, and daughter Mariam come and trouble him and say, look, we need to plan a trip to Paris and buy more cosmetics. And he's thinking, oh shit, where am I going to get that money from? Nobody is quite sure. But what does seem to have happened is that the opposition got also a little bit too excited with some of the, some of the opposition uh, leaders, not, not Adama himself, but others, proclaiming that they were going to drag Yahya Jame to uh, the ICJ for crimes against humanity. So what happened is, a week after conceding defeat, Yahya Jame now comes out and says, wait, no, the results are null and void because of discrepancies. Now, it so, just so happens that the Electoral Commission did come out with more results, stating that um, the opposition leader won by a slimmer margin than initially proclaimed. Now, the lead was still pretty, uh, pretty effective as, you know, he won with a 43% of the votes versus the 39% of Yahya Jame. Adequate, right? So what does Mr. Yahya Jame do? Well, he takes the issue to court. And the reason is the, as follows. He says that his people were harassed so as to not to vote for him and there were too many discrepancies in the vote counting. Now, the discrepancies, sure, 
I can sort of uh, see where he's coming from because the margin is slightly lower than it was initially proclaimed. But for his followers to be harassed? Now you got to understand, this is coming from a guy that has been accused of uh, killing uh, students, shooting them in broad daylight, of having a Ghanaians that happened to be that happened to come into the, into the country to be shot and killed because apparently they were there to uh, do a coup a coup on the country and take over from him. Uh, this is coming from a guy that seems to have uh, ordered the killing of several journalists for numerous reasons because well they say he felt threatened by them. And now he comes and says that the opposition, the opposition, who do not have any power in terms of uh, army or otherwise, have harassed his voters so as to not vote for him, which is why he lost the election. Now, the absurdity gets worse because the issue gets taken to court, except that there's no judge to hear the, this, the, the court case. Why? Because Mr. Yaya Jame fired the, jur the jurors in, in March 2015, which means that the court has been defunct ever since. So, wait, isn't that sort of harassing the court system? So now in order to have this case heard, uh, Yaya Jame has had to ask seven judges from, our, from, from neighboring countries to come and help out in the case, with the head judge coming from Nigeria. Now, you know, it would take a bit of homework to be done in order for these judges to figure out the court system in the Gambia. Now, this is quite apparent as the court case has been adjourned until 10th of January because, listen to this, the main defendant, the, uh, the Independent Electoral Commission, had not been summoned to attend, which means that the actual court case is now adjourned until 10th of January because of this simple procedure not having been fulfilled. Now, the neighboring countries in West Africa have done commendable things. I mean, a delegation went down to meet up with Yaya Jame and decided to sit down with him and really try to convince him that stepping down is not really such a bad thing. And they even brought along the former or the outgoing president of Ghana to convince him that he really must step down. Sadly, uh, Yaya Jame did not really listen to this um, plea. In fact, he intensified his, his resolve and even surrounded the, electro, the chief electoral commission's ho commissioner's house with this commissioner now having fled uh, the country, fearing for his life. Now, Yaya Jame being the loose cannon that he is, uh, stories started speculating or spreading that uh, Adama Barrow had been killed. Now, luckily, it seems that he's safe and sound and is really eager to, uh, to be inaugurated and start ruling or running his country. Now, this is exactly why I ran uh, this is the story the other day with uh, things being set up for the, the next president or the, 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 the next opposition leader to come in and start ruling the country with a warm hand handover. Uh, in the ideal world, of course, Yaya Jame should be brought to justice for uh, the things that people have claimed uh, he's done. However, in such a delicate situation, in a country that has had a dictator first, and now him first having conceded defeat, but then people getting too excited and saying that within a year he's going to be taken to court for his crimes against humanity, isn't really going to work. What people should have done is they should have carefully celebrated the win, had the inauguration, inauguration and then see how they're going to deal with problem Yame. I mean, yes, let's face it, the, 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 the things that are going on in that country are terrible. People are fleeing. I mentioned earlier about the ordeal of the Madinga people not being over. And the reason is, is that the, the back way road, as they call it, you know, the road going to Europe through a very treacherous and dangerous path via Lampedusa, is pretty much because of the desperate situation that these people are in. There are hardly any young people left. What should have happened is this Adama Barrow should have really told these people to sit still, stay calm, let the inauguration happen, 
uh, maybe even pardon sort of uh, Yahya Jame for uh, the things that he has done and then let them rebuild the country. That is what should, that is what is needed. And therefore, I applaud these, these leaders from around West Africa that really are trying to rally behind this Adama Barrow and say, enough is enough. Yahya Jame needs to sit down and let some fresh blood, some fresh energy come in and try and turn this country around. So that is my topic for today. Um, the other day I spoke about something positive. Today it was something a little bit more negative, I'm afraid. Uh, tomorrow or the next episode, I should say, will be about something controversial. And the last episode will be a must-watch. And this is pretty much the concept that I want to hold every week. So four videos, something positive, something negative, something controversial, and a must-watch. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please follow us on Twitter. Kindly uh, subscribe both on YouTube and on Facebook. Once again, my name is Case Kavina, and I hope to see you again for the next episode. Bye-bye.